Cancer, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you, no particular subject. We're gonna take an issue, something we know, something we don't know, recent past advice and potential outcome. At the end, there will be an opportunity for an extended where we'll dive in deeper. You can watch this for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your fourth house. This could be for you. You know the uh, the drill, guys. Thank you. However you support the channel, it's very much appreciated. Cross watches you are more than welcome. Message may well be for you. All the information is in the description box, um, including website link for private reads. Just hit the more button below. So, Cancer, what's going on? Okay. I'm being reminded of uh, something that happened to me a couple of days ago, and um, just this feeling of sadness. Um, I got to the bottom of it, um, someone very, very dear to me is leaving and yeah, it kind of, I don't know whether it just in, started bringing up maybe a couple of regrets uh, for me and that's what I feel like's going on here for you guys. It could be something that's maybe spawned some sort of um, energy of, of, of of maybe either sadness or maybe regret of some kind, maybe feeling like a missed opportunity. Um, hmm. So let's do one more. Let's see what we have. Cancer, what is going on? Interesting with Pluto moving back into Capricorn, it's going to be emphasizing your seventh house of relationships. We have the Three of Swords. There's definitely, it, it was, it was like a deep pang of sadness. Um, so there could have been something that's come to the surface. Um, it could be memories, it could be, I don't know. There's, a, there's just this feeling of, of what if maybe? What do we know? What don't we know? Recent past. Advice. And potential outcome. We have the Emperor at the bottom of the deck with judgment with the world. Wow. Okay, so this Emperor energy here, so you could be dealing with a, an Emperor um, or a Divine Masculine energy, uh, or this could be you, who knows. But you're going through a major transformation here. This is a birthing of the new Sacred Masculine. This is a, a this is the Great Awakening of some kind. If this isn't a particular person, this is the Masculine within yourself. Um, so this could be, you know, bringing structures to your life, um, forging your way forward. What is it that you want? What is it that you want to create? What legacy do you want to leave uh, behind you? Um, with the Four of Wands straight afterwards and the Three of Cups, there's a strong emphasis here of, of aligning to connections. Um, there's there's pain associated with this. Uh, there's, there's not two ways about it, but the healing that comes from it is fantastic. I almost feel like this is gonna bring a cathartic breakdown um, so if you need to cry, cry. If you need to get it out, get it out. Something is going to pull those heartstrings. So we've got the Three of Swords. What we're aware of is the Two of Swords. You might not be able to put your finger on it. This could just come out of left field. This could be uh, something that just hits you because your body is tired. You you know, I, I keep hearing I just want to be happy. Um, so this could be something that really just is what your soul's screaming for. If we look at the Three of Swords and the Two of Swords together as the Five of Swords, it's Venus in Aquarius. Now, Venus is in, in Aquarius is a, a very unique um, type of energy. It's, it's connection based on, you, you know, Aquarian energy. Aquarius is very different. It's, it's you know... It doesn't follow any sort of structured plan. It's, it's out there, it's, it liberates, it's freedom in a sense. So this could be just having a very different outlook on, on, on connections and relationships. What we're not aware of is the Knight of Cups. There's, there's a beautiful energy that surrounds you. Um, whether this is coming in uh, after this cathartic release, I don't know, it's going to be different for all of you. In the recent past, we have the Lovers. So there's been a significant connection in your life. Um, whether this is a decision that's been made, because the Lovers can be a decision whether this is um, just two people coming together, very, very balanced energies, whether that's friendship, work, 
um, um, romantic or otherwise, I don't know. But it feels powerful. Powerful enough to, to put you through this cleansing of the heart, an opening of the heart. So maybe the purpose of this, this situation was to open that heart. You know, the Two of Swords is very much, mm -mm, you're not getting anywhere near me. Uh, it's High Priestess in Justice, the Moon in Libra. Moon in Libra in, in the Moonology is um, a win-win outcome is forecast and uh, a new romantic cycle begins. So it feels like there's this need for this cathartic cleanse and it comes from whatever has caused some sort of disappointment here. This doesn't have to be, um, this could be just memories of the past in the sense of any sort of breakups and maybe you're getting a different um, concept of it. Maybe we're looking at things in a different way. Your advice is the star card. The star is the, it's hope, it's dreams, it's wishes. It's again, Aquarian energy. There's, there's, there's definitely a connection here with uh, with Venus, because obviously we've got the Emperor here as the Divine Feminine, uh, Divine Masculine, sorry, we've got the Lovers here as the, the combination of the Masculine and Feminine, and we've got the other side of this completion with the Four of Wands, Venus in Aries, the Emperor meets the Empress. So there is this connection between the Masculine and Feminine within yourself and with others around you, really kind of bringing some sort of balance at play. But the star card is, is asking you to not lose faith. You know, don't don't close yourself off. Don't let any sort of maybe disappointment or sadness uh, of the heart space. Don't let it close yourself off because there's some beautiful energies coming. Because your outcome is the king. Is the king of cups. The king of cups is that. It's the it's the highest octave of. The cups energy it's the highest octave of love and now i'm not suggesting here the king is better than the queen i'm just saying in the hierarchy as an octave the king of cups is the highest octave in fact he's um he's one part aquarius two parts pisces pisces is 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 neptune the neptune is the higher octave of venus so we'll check out the empress we'll check out uh, the hangman for ne neptune but there's just something here that feels like there's an, an emotional cathartic release which is allowing you to open that heart fully and to receive the goodness in life and to be happy like I say I mean, there's this kind of repeated pattern of um, in my head of um, I just want is that a song could even be a song Leona Lewis terrible I know that <laughs> okay where are, where's the Empress High Priestess, because uh, I was going to look for the High Priestess and Justice with the Two of Swords, is with the Four of Cups in the Tower. So again, this is whatever this is, is a cathartic release. The The Tower is, is that shock, it's that release to the system, and then the Four of Cups is your emotional sign, it's the Moon in Cancer. So there's definitely something here about a cathartic release by whatever has taken place. The hangman is with the Ace of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles. Okay. Now the Queen of Pentacles, she's she's like the grounded energy to the magician. And if you think the hangman is two parts, because it's card 12, so part one, part two. Um, part one is the magician, part two is that high priestess. So the magician aspect is is alchemy, it's, it's magic, it's... Um, how we draw magic into reality. And when I say that, I mean it in the sense of how do we manifest and bring it into the, the, the manifest world. And there's something about surrender here with the, um, surrender is key with this Ace of Swords. Now, surrender is an interesting one. It's, it, for me, it's actually a superpower. You know, if you can, if you can get surrender and detachment right, you're, you, you're, you're doing pretty well. Um, you know, it doesn't mean giving up on, on a situation, it just means giving up trying to have everything figured out. The other side of that Queen of Pentacles is the devil. Devil is control. You know, it's it's again your opposite sign. It's in your house of the of, of relationships, the seventh house, where Pluto is moving back in, doing all these transformations. And um, to surrender means you're, to, you're you're fully in flow with life. You're you're 
you know, excited about the unknown, surrendering to not knowing what's around the corner, um, and and placing a little bit of hope and faith of the star card into the divine to you know roll out your soul's purpose. Um, you know, it's, it's it's a real catalyst for abundance is is surrender. Um, what was I looking for? Empress, one sec. And look at that. I mean, the Empress is with the Two of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune. You're destined for some sort of beautiful, beautiful um, alignment here. I almost feel like this is alignment. Because it, in it's strangely enough, I, I've just done Gemini's reading, which is the lovers. So you could have Gemini in your chart or be dealing with Gemini. Considering you're such a close sign, there's, you know, highly likely um especially if your son's in cancer you know chances of mercury or venus being in in gemini is, is relatively high it doesn't matter you don't have to have these placements but there's just something that i spoke to them about because jupiter is in their sign and in the middle of september we do have um venus in a trine with jupiter so we've got venus with the empress jupiter with the wheel of fortune it's in a trine and it's bringing together just lovely energies trines are beautiful Last card is the Page of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles is, I almost feel like it's talking about curiosity, maybe expanding your viewpoint in something. You know, going back to, going back to the basics with things, whether that's starting a hobby that you loved as a kid, whether it's doing something that, not for the, not for the, it's, you know, we, we live in a society now where immediately people want to monetize hobbies. You know, this is, this is finding something where there's, there's no end goal. If you find something with no end goal, it's, it's going to help with surrender because you haven't got that focus on that end goal. You haven't got that focus on a particular outcome and that's going to help with the surrender process, which is going to be that catalyst for abundance. Okay. Powerful energies at play. Let me quickly check out the Five of Swords whilst I have the deck. And then we'll talk about your extended. of swords is with the seven of cups and the page of swords okay for some of you this could be um i almost feel like it's something online so this could be watching somebody's social media or somebody's watching yours i don't know but it's, it's part of the process there's something about the seven of cups representing venus in scorpio um you know trusting in just empress means death essentially there's a whole process that has to take place in in any sort of spiritual transformation just hold on to a lot of hope and faith we've got a page of cups that very again piscean energy which is very neptunian neptunian is that higher octave of um venus you know um spiritual the spiritual love you know bring me a higher love as they say okay so in your extended, we're going to clarify these. We're going to try and dive deeper into this kind of what this pain's representing, and and this King of Cups in the future is is essentially, it's it's your counterpart in a sense. Now you know, don't get caught up in genders, and um, your water, so you embody the natural feminine energy, and the King of Cups is the ma is is the match to the Queen of Cups, which is your card. That's all I was getting. In fact, the Queen of Cups is with the uh, the chariot, which is your card, uh, in this spread. I'm pretty sure I just saw. Yeah, look at that. Chariot with the Queen of Cups and the Moon. All your energy. You guys rule the Moon. You are the Chariot and you are the Queen of Cups. So everything is aligning for you. you you're going to get your balance. You're going to get your, you're going to get your happiness, Cancer. Um, whatever this process is, is awakening the heart to that higher octave of love. Okay. If you can join me, fantastic. If not, let me know if it resonates. Saturn in Libra, um, Moon in Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, Aries, 
Scorpio, Libra, Capricorn, Venus in Aries, Mercury in Cancer, Saturn in Taurus, Mercury in Aquarius, Sun in Virgo, Mars in Gemini, Sun in Aries, Leo, Moon in Cancer, Cancer Pisces, Aries and Scorpio. We have swords, we have cups, we have wands, we have pentacles. Everyone's here, those are your standouts, let me know, take care, see you soon.